We presented our work trying to understand the way that immune cells that sit within tissues respond to challenges to those tissues. The concept here is that the great burden of malignancy in human health is primarily the tumours, often called solid tumours, that grow within tissues, the skin, the gut, the lung, the liver. The immune system, which is now acknowledged to have a significant interrelationship with, with the development of tumours, is not simply an immune system that comes from a centralised compartment from the blood and from the lymph nodes. But the immune system actually already contains, contains large numbers of cells within those tissues, even under normal circumstances. And it seems rather essential to understand how those immune cells interact with these tissues under any form of circumstances, if we're then to understand how the immune system interacts with tumours that form in those tissues. So that was essentially the thesis of the, of the presentation. Yeah, so, uh, well again, uh, our whole approach has been to understand the normal biology of these cells and then to ask how the development of tumours in those tissues perturbs that normal biology. So, interestingly enough, um, the existence of these cells and their special properties that relate to where they sit, for example, T lymphocytes that sit within the skin are not the same as the T lymphocytes that sit within the gut and are not the same as the T lymphocytes that sit within the lung. This has been known for about a quarter of a century, but the basis of this special uh, intimate, as it were, interrelationship between these T cell compartments and their tissues was really not known. And there were several groups that tried very hard to find ways to unpeel what were the key interactions that, that mediated that. Well, happily, um, by persisting uh, with this question, we began to get some clues about 10 years ago, uh, some genetic clues as to what might be the molecules that were regulating this. Just this year, we've completed the identification of molecules that mediate the interaction of specific tissues, for example, mouse skin, mouse gut, human gut, with these very specific T cell compartments. And now that we've identified those molecules, we can now very specifically ask what happens in cancer. And of course, perhaps predictably, what we find in studies of colorectal cancer is that these molecules are seemingly very specifically reduced in their expression. And that means that the T cells that are sitting in the gut have a reduced ability to monitor these cancers. At least that's what we would predict. And what's good about that is it gives us a very, very clear and clean clinical target, which is to try to re-establish that molecular axis, as it were, uh, in that targeted fashion. Now, it's worth noting, I think, that the advantage potentially of this kind of approach over uh, broad-based immunotherapies that are beginning to do so very, very well in many clinical scenarios, albeit with very, very significant burdens of adverse events, is that these molecular axes that we're talking about here are extremely localized. So the idea would be that, for example, if a lesion was in the gut, you could specifically manipulate immune regulation of that lesion in the tissue that was relevant rather than blasting your systemic immune system uh, and thereby uh, unleashing potentially severe side effects, which is clearly the clinical experience to this point. So while things are going very, very well at the moment in the clinic, we hope that this more localized, refined approach will prove to be the useful next step forward as we refine our immunotherapeutic approaches. We use a lot of technologies. Um, one of the reasons that I'm at the Francis Crick Institute is they have spectacularly powerful 
technologies uh, at a molecular level and at a cellular level for looking in animal model systems uh, where we can probe cause and effect in ways that you can't do in humans. Conversely, one of the reasons I have a laboratory at King's College London is the Guy's, King's and St. Thomas's health trusts are, are extraordinarily powerful and, and, and extremely um, uh, knowledgeable centres for the provision of care. So we're able to liaise with clinicians and very rapidly validate what we do in animal studies into human and back again into animal studies to do testing. So we, um, we, uh, we're very happy with that situation, but it took a very long time to build. That's, it's not typical to be in that position, and that's the sort of thing that actually needs a lot of attention. Uh, the other things that we've benefited from is the investment from the Department of Health in what's known as biomedical research centers, and that's pr provided us with access to very high-end flow cytometry, uh, genomics, uh, so on and so forth. So, so uh, yeah, none of this would be possible without the capacity to, uh, to harness um, state-of-the-art approaches both in model systems and with clinical samples.